dear friends welcome to yet another episode of who's who in the bible praying with the biblical characters before we begin our reflection on the biblical character of today let us invoke the presence of the holy spirit through this prayer that with the presence of the holy spirit we may be filled with his overshadowing presence and we may open our hearts and minds to listen to the good news of Jesus Christ and like this apostle and many other apostles of Jesus Christ may we grow in our faith in our zeal in following his footsteps and becoming his true and authentic disciple we make this prayer through Jesus Christ our lord amen so dear friends as i said in the introductory prayer today's biblical character that we are going to reflect with pray with and journey with is bartholomew who is bartholomew bartholomew was one of the 12 apostles of jesus according to the new testament He has also been identified as Nathanael who appears in the gospel of John when introduced to Jesus by Philip although many modern commentators reject the identification of Nathanael with Bartholomew with regard to the identity of Bartholomew the identity of Bartholomew has caused diverse opinions among the biblical scholars the identity of bartholomew is still debatable among the scholars most biblical scholars believe that nathaniel and bartholomew were one and the same nathaniel means in hebrew god has given the gift of god nathaniel of cana in galilee was a follower or a disciple of Jesus mentioned only in the gospel of John in chapters 1 and 21 respectively is this is this nathaniel mentioned in John's gospel and bartholomew mentioned in the synoptic gospels one and the same some biblical scholars would tell you that bartholomew and nathaniel are one and the same here are a few proofs they mention first proof they explain that bartholomew is not a real name but rather a patronymic name a family name which basically means son of talmai in hebrew he is known as bar talmai bar in hebrew means son of as in Simon bar Jona in Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 we see this so bar talmai which again means the rich soil furrows or farmer the name implies that he may have heard another name for that reason and because he was always associated with saint philip the apostle in the gospel passages of jesus choosing the 12 disciples a 9th century tradition identified him with nathaniel who according to john chapter 1 verse 43 to 51 was called by jesus along with philip the second proof they mention is that in the gospel of john bartholomew is not mentioned at all Nathaniel is mentioned instead after Philip likewise Nathaniel's presence with other disciples at the sea of Galilee after Jesus resurrection suggests that he was one of the original 12 we see this in John's gospel chapter 21 verse 2 and a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ the third proof is that the name bartholomew always follows 
the name of Philip in the list of Jesus' disciples as evidenced in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels. See Matthew chapter 10 verse 3, Mark 3 verse 18, Luke 6 verse 14. We see Bartholomew is always mentioned along with Philip or after Philip, which further shows that Bartholomew and Nathaniel were one and the same. This might indicate that they have been long-time friends and coincide with the instance that it was Philip who brought Nathaniel to Christ. If the assumption is correct, that Bartholomew and Nathaniel are one and the same, then we can have a better perspective of Bartholomew's character. We read an encounter of Jesus Christ and Bartholomew in John chapter 1, verse 43 to 50, which is also the background of his calling. How Nathaniel was called. In the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 43 and following, we see Philip bringing Nathaniel to Jesus. Upon seeing Nathaniel, Jesus said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. This identification seeks to explain how the otherwise unknown Bartholomew could be mentioned in the apostle lists, while Nathaniel, whose call is explicitly described by John, does not figure in them. His full name would then be Nathaniel Bar Talmai. Bartholomew lived in the first century AD. He was introduced to Jesus through Saint Philip and is also known as Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, notably in John's Gospel. When introduced to Jesus, Nathaniel could not believe initially that Jesus is the Messiah by a cynical rhetoric. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? When Jesus said, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree, Nathaniel expressed his utmost faith in the Lord, saying, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. We see here that God has already been at work on him in multiple ways. He is summoned by the witness of another disciple and he is introduced directly to Jesus, converted by his word. Nathaniel's faith is the occasion of Jesus' first truly, truly I say to you statement in the Gospel of John. Having seen the background of Bartholomew's calling, we will now see the missionary activities of Bartholomew. The Bible presents Bartholomew together with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to seven disciples post his resurrection, which is given in the account of John chapter 21 verse 1 and the following, which I would like to read for you. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. And again, we see in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 13 to 14, that Bartholomew is present in the company of Jesus' disciples in the upper room as they devoted themselves in prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Apart from these accounts, we do not find the name of Bartholomew mentioned anywhere in the Bible. It is believed that like the other apostles, he went about proclaiming the gospel 
and about the risen Christ to the eastern world which was a part of the Roman Empire. Traditionally, Bartholomew is said to have served as a missionary in Ethiopia, Mesopotamia, the land of civilization, Parthia, the modern Iran, Lycaonia, the modern Turkey, and Armenia. During his mission in Armenia, according to popular hagiography, the apostle is said to have been martyred by flaying and beheading at the command of the Armenian king Astyages on account of Bartholomew having influenced the Armenian king Polymius to convert to Christianity. Can you imagine, my dear friends, the vigor and the zeal the apostle had in proclaiming about Jesus and even to the extreme of being skinned alive. His relics were supposedly taken to the church of St. Bartholomew in the Tiber, Rome. With regard to his mission in India, tradition according to Eusebius of Caesarea's ecclesiastical history and St. Jerome of fourth century states that after the ascension, Bartholomew went on a missionary tour to India, where he left behind a copy of the Gospel of Matthew. The same tradition holds that the Bombay region on the Konkan coast, a region which must have been known after the ancient town of Kalyan, which means happy, was the field of Bartholomew's missionary activities and his martyrdom. Well, while some scholars support this, majority of the scholars are skeptical about the mission of St. Bartholomew in India. The main argument is that the India which Eusebius and Jerome refer to should be Ethiopia or Arabia Felix. What is Bartholomew known for? What is he famous for? Along with his fellow apostle Jude, Thaddeus, Bartholomew is reputed to have brought Christianity to Armenia in the first century. Therefore, he is known as the apostle of Armenia. Thus, both the saints are considered the patron saints of the Armenian Apostolic Church. Saint Bartholomew is credited with many miracles related to the weight of objects. Of the many miracles claimed to have been performed by Bartholomew before and after his death, two very popular ones are known by the townsfolk of the small Italian island of Lipari. The people of Lipari celebrated his feast day annually by taking the solid silver and gold statue from inside the cathedral of St. Bartholomew and carry it through the town. On one occasion, when taking the statue down the hill towards the town, it suddenly became very heavy and the men had to set it down. When the men regained their strength, they lifted it a second time. But after another few seconds, it got even heavier. They set it down and attempted once more to pick it up. They managed to lift it, but were unable to carry it any further and had to put it down one last time. Within a few seconds, high stone walls further downhill collapsed. If the statue had been able to be lifted and carried alongside the wall, all the townspeople participating in the procession would have been killed. That was the first miracle. The second one. During World War II, the fascist regime looked for ways to finance their activities. The order was given to take the silver statue of St. Bartholomew and melt it down. The statue was weighed 
and somehow it was found to weigh only a few grams and it was returned to its place in the cathedral of Lipari. In reality, my dear friends, the statue is made from many kilograms of silver and it is considered a miracle that it was not melted down. Saint Bartholomew's relics had been deposited in churches named to honor him. His arm in Canterbury, England, skull in Frankfurt, Germany, and body in Lipari. Having seen the missionary activities of Saint Bartholomew and the miracles that was performed in his name, and seeing the zeal and the vigor of this particular apostle Bartholomew, what are the lessons we can learn from the life of Bartholomew? Yes, there is little we can read about the apostle Bartholomew in the Bible, except his name being mentioned in the Synoptic Gospels and in the Gospel of John in two occasions in chapter 1 and chapter 21 and in the Acts of the Apostles, we find no trace of him anywhere in the Bible. However, this does not mean that we can't learn anything from his life. There are a few important aspects that we can imbibe in our life. First, lesson that we learn from the Apostle Bartholomew. We must be dedicated to Jesus Christ like Bartholomew and the other apostles of Jesus. Apart from the verses mentioned above, we don't read much about Bartholomew. However, if there is one valuable lesson from Bartholomew's life that we should learn, it would be to stay dedicated to our Master and Savior Jesus Christ, who has called each one of us to live a true and authentic Christian life. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ, we would need to be ready to give up everything for the sake of the gospel. If the situation calls for it, you and me should even be ready to give up our life like the Apostle Bartholomew. Jesus said, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 to 25, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross or her cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. As a disciple of Christ, Bartholomew learned how to submit to God and do His will in his life. Not only that, but being teachable and humble are two traits that Bartholomew could have also learned from the time he spent with Jesus. The second lesson that we can learn from the life of St. Bartholomew and his encounter with Jesus Christ is that God can help us change provided we are ready to change. Of course, every disciple of Christ is still human, which is evident even in the modern world today. We see priests, religious, and the other faithful of God fall and stumble often due to human weaknesses. Because we are still human, endowed with weaknesses and frailties, among the most unforgettable mistakes of Bartholomew is when he forsook Christ when he needed him the most. When Christ was arrested, all of his disciples deserted him except John. However, when Christ was resurrected, Bartholomew was changed from a weak and coward apostle to a bold and zealous servant of God. Like the other apostles, he stayed faithful and true to his calling. He is among the apostles who were waiting in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. 
We see this in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 13. As a reward to his obedience and dedication, he received the Holy Spirit together with other followers of Christ. The third lesson that we can learn from the life of St. Bartholomew. Greatness is found in serving. This could be another lesson we can learn from Bartholomew. The true meaning of greatness. It was recorded that Bartholomew was among the disciples of Christ who wanted to obtain greater glory and recognition. That we see in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 24, where there was a great dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. The teaching of Christ is quite different from what they expected. For Bartholomew, the more servants you have, the greater you would be. The more people respect and recognize you, the more you become great. However, Christ's response was different. Read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 25 to 27. Jesus saying to the disciples, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For which is the greater, one who sits at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at table? But I am among you as one who serves. In short, my dear friends, if you want to be great, then you need to serve. You need to become servant. You and me are called to be at the service of one another. Bartholomew and the other disciples might have been staring at Christ in unbelief. All their lives, their concept of greatness is wrong. And here, Christ is correcting them and teaching them the importance of humility. And the lesson is not only for the disciples, but also for all of us, for you and for me. These are the lessons that we can take home today as we reflect and pray and journey with the Apostle Bartholomew, one of the 12 Apostles of Jesus Christ. I would like to end this reflection, this prayer, this journey with a small prayer. May we close our eyes and pray that after knowing a little more about Bartholomew, the Apostle of Jesus. We may also strive, inspired by the life and the apostolic zeal of Bartholomew, that we may be dedicated to Jesus Christ, ready to change and eventually become the servants of the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we may also become the true and authentic followers disciples, apostle of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So dear friends, thank you for joining us for this episode on Who's Who in the Bible, Praying with Biblical Characters. Good night and God bless you once again.